Good morning from Sitka. It is so great to see all of your smiling faces. Um, <laughs> not that we can actually see any of your faces, but uh, <laughs> hopefully you're smiling. Uh, we are smiling because the weather cams finally look good enough, um, actually really good, uh, hopefully it doesn't change, to get down to catch a can. And yeah, it should be about 160 miles. <laughs> yeah, Steph's still finishing off for breakfast. 160 miles to catch a can. Can't He's really okay. complain. I mean, this is like as good as it gets here, right? This is basically 10 statue miles and clear by Sitka standards. So, time to break down the bikes, load up the airplane, and head to Ketchikan. I'm John from Fly 8 Mike Alpha, CFI turned airline pilot turned back to CFI. Come along on my journey flying Alaska to Florida and beyond. Final's clear. Onward to Catch Can. Woo! All right, so are we going to go up over the top through Green Lake, or what's the game plan? Oh. Want to go around the side? I was going to say if it's calm, because the wind's pretty calm today, so we shouldn't get rocked too bad, we could probably climb up through Green Lake here and be high enough in time. Get the uh, train pulled up here and see what we get to work with. Bye-bye, Sitka. That was a cool town. I really liked it. I like all the coasty towns, like Kodiak and Sitka. Oh, we got ADSB. We got weather. It is awesome. Okay, knock on some sort of wood. <laughs> the weather could not be any more perfect. <laughs> You just jinxed it. Yeah. <laughs> Watch it turn like in two minutes. <laughs> yeah. There's some interesting mountains. Oh yeah. Well you said that a lot of these got covered in ash when that uh, mount, I forgot, erupted. And he said like there's a ton of landslides all over the place whenever they get rain. You can definitely see it. So I guess that's Green Lake off the left there. What's that glacier? Or huge chunk of ice. I don't even know if it has a name. We can name it. Oh! Supply of Michael Glacier. Official. Oh, I was going to say the stuff in John Glacier. That's cute too. <laughs> Woohoo! Oh man, that's beautiful. This is fun. Wow, these lakes up here are just spectacular. Holy crap. This is amazing! Oh yeah. This is really pretty freaking cool. Wow. They're so pointy, the mountains. Yeah. There are so many spots you'd want to come out here with a helicopter and just like set down, camp for the night. Yeah. It'd be amazing in the summertime, clear skies. Although at 5,000 feet, you might freeze. Well, I don't know. Summertime, you think you get 50, 60 degrees up here? I would still bring like zero degree bags probably. Yeah. It's 37 outside right now. Not too bad. It's brisk and refreshing. I'm, I'm adapting to this uh, <laughs> colder weather here. It's taking some time, but <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and just uh, pull this little knob back slightly. It seems uh, it's in a non-normal position at the moment. I'm going to fix that there for you. <laughs> Good thing we have you around to fix that. Yep, not a problem. Want to start climbing back up and make the jump over there? Yeah. 5,500 should keep us semi remotely safe ish. What kind of glide ring do we have around us right now? Not much of one. We should probably climb up high and save some fuel. 
Okay. Hour and 18 minutes to go. Overhead at 2,000 feet for GNL Cape traffic. Hey. First time we've heard somebody in Hello. Uh, we're uh, 6,000. Oh, now they're all coming out of the woodwork. Yeah. Can we make a call? <laughs> Where are we? Don't even know. Chatham. Chatham Street. Adam Street, man. Makes no sense at all. <laughs> all right. I don't follow. Oh, I was so excited. I saw a Sirius XM thing for a minute. The light came on. We're getting towards civilization. We're going to have XM radio soon. Everyone's going to find out what terrible taste of music I have. <laughs> Great. <laughs> I had not seen that light since Florida. Come on, Sirius XM. Uh, let's go. You know, it would have been more and more catchy if they just would have stayed two separate companies. If you could have been like, come on, Sirius, or come on, XM. But now it's, come on, Sirius, XM. And it's just not really, I don't really roll off the tongue. What's our weather over in... At least we have a bit of a tailwind. I know, yeah. Doing 135 over the ground. Yeah. Pretty awesome. Yeah, we probably should have got fuel in Sitka. I mean, we got plenty, but it just makes me feel more warm and fuzzy to have more fuel on board. All right. 3014 on the meter. El Tim meter. And we're within, ooh, trivia of the day. How often are you supposed to reset the altimeter? Should I, can and, I answer? Yeah, you can take a guess. Take a guess? Yeah. And everyone Every let 15 you know. minutes. Okay, uh, <laughs> good guess. Uh, everyone in the comments can uh, let us know what they think. It's either uh, that or every hour. <laughs> no, every 15 degrees. What was it? Something with 15. Oh, <laughs> uh, well, I don't want to give away the answer, but we will give away the answer in the next episode. Okay. Um, but it has nothing to do with time. There's your hint. Okay. Um, it's more of a uh, IFR thing, but it's also good for VFR, and it is a reg. I can't remember which one it is now, but I believe it's somewhere in 91. Where are we now? Alvin Bay. How in the world do they come up with the names of these places? There's trivia number two of the day. How in the world do all these places get named? Peku. Do I just have to go somewhere no one else has ever been before and get to name places? Can we go to Mars and start naming a bunch of spots? I bet you we are passing by some places that don't have names. That we could maybe name. Ooh. Like those glaciers we named. Yeah, we named some they glaciers. They didn't have names. Yeah. Always checking, making sure nothing's obstructing the fuel selector valve. That would make things very interesting very quickly. It seems like our bags and bottles and everything always seem to inch closer to it. Oh, we want to make like a protective cover on it. <laughs> we want to make things interesting for the viewers, right? <laughs> uh, not that interesting. Um, Let's yeah. see what happens when we. <laughs> yeah, I've had so many students flip that thing off on me, and it is so annoying. Yep, just one click to the left. Just line it up with where it says left tank. Oh, you switched it off. That's why the engine stopped. Now please stop freaking out and switch it back to both or to the right tank or whatever. And the Cherokee is over by their left foot. So as they're freaking out, you have to somehow crawl around them, not get hit in the face to turn the fuel back on. How do we make this thing burn less fuel? I guess 10.2, 10.3 is not bad right now. Bad. Doing 105 indicated. Texas and the six Citadel, they're coming, on, coming up on Cabano Point, descending through 4,000 for the strip. Catch again. Catch again, radio Cessna, 296 Citadel does just north of Valinor Point. I've got the inbound in sight uh, for the strip with India. I'm sorry, last aircraft, could you say again? 
Cessna 10 6 to Delta, bound our point, inbound for the strip with India. Number 2 Niner 6, catch a can radio, Valner, and will you be using 1 1 or 2 Niner? I will do 2 Niner, is that the preferred runway right now? November 2 Niner 6, Roger, that's correct. Uh, runway 2 Niner is favored, and the current winds are 300 at 8, altimeter 3013. Copy, and it's 2 Niner 6 2 Delta. Would you like me to just make uh, left traffic for 2 Niner then? Yes, that's correct. 6 2 Delta. Think there's any cruise ships in the harbor this time of year? I doubt it. Yeah. That season is all over now. Maybe late September they still have some, but not into October, I don't think. Yeah. Okay, should I land long or back taxi? Yeah, up to you. Um, I'll probably just land long. Unless you want to practice your short field landings. Pressure's on. Oh, yeah. The world is watching. <laughs> You'll do fine. Just drag it in with power. Full flap, drag it in. Get set up nice and stable, you know, fly a half mile final or so. It's a very interesting uh, grass they have around the runway. Grass or gravel? Yeah, I don't know what that is. Oh, it's just very greenish gravel. Green gravel. Nice landing. And Almost. Almost made it. <laughs> Just about 100 feet long is all. Not bad. 6 Delta, clear to 2-Niner. And we've made it to Catch Can, the land of FBOs and um, popcorn at FBOs. FBO popcorn. The best popcorn I've ever tasted in my life. Pretty much because we both have super low blood sugar right now <laughs> and we really need food desperately. <laughs> so uh, we are here waiting for the ferry to take us across the bay over to the city really because the airport is across the uh, river, island, bay, whatever you want to call it. I have no idea. I'm really tired and hungry. Um, <laughs> But we have to go across to get to the city to get yeah. some food and then find an Airbnb, find a place to stay for tonight. It is amazing weather, like absolutely top notch, amazing. Cannot believe how well it worked out. Makes you just want to go fly more, but it also makes me kind of want to just hang out here and enjoy it. And maybe we'll do some video editing in the sunshine. Hopefully. And I hear they have a Walmart here, so maybe we can make a... <laughs> I hate Walmart, but at this point, I believe you it's, keep saying it's really all we have to get regular supplies. He keeps saying he hates Walmart, and then every time there's a Walmart, he's so excited. <laughs> well, there's typically like cables or chargers or something that's broken uh, between Walmart stops, and I need to go get more chargers or something, batteries, whatever it might be, screwdrivers, tools. Mostly it's just what we do instead of watching TV. <laughs> well, I just, I need more GoPros because we keep breaking them. So hopefully we can go to Walmart. Hopefully they have some GoPros in stock here. And yeah, that's pretty much it. So let's go find some food. So we had a very good dinner and now it is time to go find a place to stay, try to find an Airbnb or a hotel or something. Luckily there's 4G LTE in Ketchikan, which is awesome. <laughs> thanks to all the tourists that come here. This is basically like the welcoming gates of Alaska for a lot of people. Cause I think most people start their cruises or their Alaska vacations here. Alaska mm -hmm. Airlines flies into the airport. Um, fun fact. There's about 8,000 some people in town in Ketchikan making it the fifth largest city in Alaska, uh, population wise. <laughs> so the bar was not set very high on that one, I don't think. <laughs> but um, 8, in any case, it's an awesome town. Uh, we're excited to go check it out some more. We got to get settled in, find a place to stay and all that. But figured it was a good time to wrap up the vlog. Beautiful sunset, amazing weather. Could not have asked for it to be any better, especially after the kind of the crap that we had dealt with the last couple of days. Yeah. So hopefully it stays good like this. We're aiming for Bella Bella or Bella Coola tomorrow in Canada with any luck, uh, but we have no idea what the weather will be like. Obviously down here in Southeast, it's pretty iffy all the time. So you guys know what to do. Like the video if you do, subscribe if you have not already. Hit the little bell, get notified of all our latest episodes as we post them on our way down to Reno for the High Sierra Fly-In. Aiming to be there October 19th-ish in Reno. With Sia. With Sia. I'm so excited. <laughs> and that's pretty much it. So we will see you guys in the next episode. 
So this is a very exciting day because I think uh, John actually uh, and Sia get along now. <laughs> sure, of course, we always have. It's been an unbreakable bond from the beginning. So, you know, yeah. it's kind of nice to see. It's licking me again.